So I become interested in being able to do reflow soldering at home, so I can solder things like BGAs or packages with heat slugs underneath them. And after doing some research, I decided to try out a couple of different solder reflow ovens imported from China. This first one is called a T962. These ones are pretty uh, common on eBay. You can also order them from AliExpress. And this one I actually ordered through Amazon from a seller who maintained US stock. So it got to me in a couple days with free Amazon Prime shipping. Now this one is noted online as having a bunch of issues and requiring some work right out of the box to uh, repair it before it's really usable. As we'll see when we get inside, there's some paper masking tape insulation inside, which has to be replaced with something more heat tolerant, like Kapton tape. The uh, electrical safety has some issues. The grounding wire isn't really done properly per uh, US standards for that kind of thing. The buttons are very bouncy with the standard firmware. It doesn't follow the temperature profile very well, overheating the board quite a bit and not cooling down quickly enough. I believe there's some open source firmware which I can reflash this unit with to make it work quite a bit better and I'll give that a try in another video. Okay, let's take a look at this thing now. Okay, here's the T962 reflow oven just as I received it from Amazon. Let's see what's inside this box. Here's the box within the box. 110 volt option. Now let's get inside here. First we have the user's manual. And it's all packed up in uh, flat styrofoam. Power cord. There it is. And the handles come off. Looks like the screw either fell out or broke off. Looks like the screw just backed out, so I'll probably be able to retrieve it and reattach the handle once I figure out how to get inside the front of this. So as you can see, it's echo worthy. It has exhaust vents on the side or intake vents. That's good to know that the QC passed. 110 volt input. Here's the data plate. Model T962, 110 volt, 800 watts. Date of production, February 2015. Looks like Echo Worthy is part of the company name. I won't pronounce that right. Xiaomen, Echo Worthy Technology Company Limited, www.echo-worthy.com. So go around the air side. Here's the small fan for cooling the electronics. Now let's look on the bottom. Well, first things first, let's get inside this thing. Looks like these screws will have to come out, including the one under the QC Pass sticker. Okay, now how does this come off? Uh, 
think there's some more screws underneath here. There we go. It's just getting hung up on the insulation inside. Okay, so first thing we see is the infamous masking tape I keep hearing about. That will definitely all have to be replaced with Kapton tape. That will really stink when it gets turned on otherwise. Up inside the top, you can see the LCD module and the controller, lots of hot snot, little fan. These are probably the penetrations for the thermocouples. And then these other wires would be for connections to the uh, IR heat tubes. This masking tape is actually kind of smelly before the heats have even been turned on. I imagine it would get really, really stinky if I left that in place and let this thing get hot. I'd like to take this drawer off to try to repair the handle and also get another look inside, or a better look inside the heating chamber. Looks like it's just screwed on to the uh, slides which are on the bottom. There we go. So here's the drawer. Now we can start to see inside the heating chamber. There's uh, two uh, quartz IR heating tubes and a couple of thermocouples dangling down inside there. Here's another view. There's one of the two thermocouples. There's the other one. Just dangling down there between the bulbs. So all this masking tape has to come off. I'm going to replace it with this Kapton tape. I can't believe they're using paper tape inside of an oven, even if it is on the outside of the insulation. That just seems pretty silly. There, that should keep it from emitting some foul smoke when I turn it on for the first time, at least. Now let's see if I can get this drawer apart without cutting my fingers on the uh, sharp edges of the sheet metal. Nothing's deburred. There's a sharp remnants of the punch outs on the bottom. Feels like their dies are probably pretty worn from making a lot of these. And we're in. Some fluffy insulation, which I sure hope is not asbestos. I'm going to carefully pull away this bit here. And there's the screw from the uh, handle that fell off. Well, there's your problem. The threads are stripped out from the back of the handle. So I'm just going to have to replace the whole handle, I think. I think this is just glass wool, but I'm going to take a little sample anyway, in case I might want to get it uh, inspected to find out what it really is. Oh, well, that's nice. Glass is held in with hot snot. 
You just picture that glass falling out when the thing gets hot. Let's take another look at the wiring inside where the thermocouples are installed. They're secured in place with some silicone sealant. Now, wiring on the back, the screws are held in place with some hot snot to keep them from backing out. Also, the power switch is secured with some hot snot. Wonder how uh, strong that will be when this thing starts getting warm. I don't know if this thing is really going to work well in any type of high duty cycle. That stuff might start getting soft as the whole thing heats up. So the ground lead from the IC connector is uh, secured to one of the mounting screws for the connector and then there's some hot snot on top of that to keep it from backing out. Let's get the hot snot off and see how well they made the connection. So it's held in place with a screw and a nut. I don't see any separate anti-shake washer. Nope, no anti-shake washer, no anti-shake uh, teeth on the uh, ring lug. No teeth to let it cut through the paint or powder coating into the metal. There's no way this thing would pass UL. So it looks like instead of taking the right ring lug and crimping it on with the right tool, this is kind of crimped over with a pair of pliers and then soldered into place. That's not how you normally want to handle a, a safety critical grounding wire. Just as a band-aid, I'm going to add a couple of tooth lock washers into the stack to hopefully help it make a better connection to the case and keep from backing out. Here's a close-up of the circuit board, the main control board inside the top panel. It's upside down here. This looks like the main controller. It's an NXP LPC 2134. Here's a header marked ISP. That's, I would imagine that's the in-circuit programming header. The two thermocouples are attached to these uh, green binding posts over here. This flex looks like it's going to the push buttons and this ribbon cable appears to be going to the LCD. Here's the LCD controller and the small fan inside the top. See they used a chip on board construction underneath these three blobs plus some other parts over here. And the fan is a San Ace 40 made by Sanyo Denki if the label is to be believed. Well, that's enough poking around inside for now. Let's put it back together, turn it on, and see how much smoke comes out. Okay, first power on. I have a fire extinguisher standing by just in case. It's drawing 4.1 watts right now. I just put it into Chinese, didn't I? This F4 is okay. Hmm. I'm not sure if I believe that. Keeps coming back to wave one. I want to try to use wave five. It says F3 is delete and F4 is okay, but F4 keeps sending it back into Chinese mode. There's those bouncy keys I found I heard about. Okay, let's get a thermocouple probe inside this and give it a go. I have a K-type thermocouple probe attached to a piece of scrap board with some Kapton tape. I'm going to tape my board scrap down to the uh, tray with some Kapton tape to keep it from moving around, and then I'll just extend the thermocouple lead out through the edge of the drawer when I close it. I thought I'd take a look at the manual to see if it could help me make any more sense out of the temperature selection screen. Turns out the manual doesn't even match the firmware that's in this thing. You see that uh, this is telling me that F1 and F2 are right and left. F3 is details, F4 is okay. But if we look at the manual, it says F1 and F2 are left and right, F3 and F4 are up and down, and the S key is okay. So who knows what firmware is even in this thing. Okay, I think I get it now. The F4 key actually was okay, but because it bounced, uh, as soon as I got to the top menu, it, I, it hit again and I selected Chinese language. That's why I kept switching to Chinese language. So let's try this again. I'm going to press F3 for temperature wave select. I'm going to select wave 2, which they say is supposed to be correct for 6337 tin lead solder. Let's look at the details. It 
should solder at 225C for 10 seconds with a total time of 420 seconds. And looks like it bounced. And I selected Chinese again. Let's go back to temperature wave select. Try to select wave two. Then say OK. And I think it bounced. No telling what's going to happen. Well, let's give this a try. This is the readout of the actual thermocouple inside the uh, unit that I taped down to a piece of scrap board. Make sure my fire extinguisher is handy. And let's try to execute a cycle. Wave two, all right. This should take seven minutes if this knows how to count properly. So we'll just do a time lapse of the actual temperature versus what it's trying to do. Okay, it looks like the target temperature at this moment is around 155 degrees C. The actual temperature is about 180 degrees C. So I can see why people have reported burning boards in this thing until they got the uh, temperature profile working better. No visible smoke yet, that's a good sign. The controller thinks the board is at around 223C, but it's actually at 265. No visible smoke has come out. No terrible stench, thanks to pulling out the uh, masking tape and replacing it with Kapton. What's interesting is even the controller sees that the board is cooling down a lot more slowly than the profile dictates, so I think that fan isn't blowing enough air out to really cool the thing down effectively. As we can see, the board itself is actually still quite hot. It should be 70C right now. It's actually 164. And the controller thinks it's around 140. So between the uh, poor temperature control, the inadequate cooling down speed, and the very bouncy buttons. There's lots of room for improvement here. I hope it'll work better. Oop, it says it's done. I hope it'll work better with the open source firmware. Is it just gonna beep forever? The board is still about 150 degrees C. Here's a GitHub repository I found with a whole bunch of improvements for the T962 oven. It's by user Unified Engineering. It's called T962 Improvements. It includes uh, both hardware improvements, such as replacing the stinky masking tape with Kapton, adding cold junction compensation for the thermocouples, fixing that uh, unsafe ground connection, and adding speed control for the fan to quiet it down, as well as a new set of uh, open source firmware which can be flashed into the NXP 30, uh, LPC 2134 processor inside. Uh, this firmware is uh, said to debounce the buttons a whole bunch better and add much better temperature control. So I plan to try this out later and make a new video with my results. So there you have it. A first look at a T962 solder reflow oven. I bought it from Amazon, unboxed it for you, tore it apart, removed some of the flammable items, fixed it up a little bit, and did a first thermal cycle on it. I found that it doesn't follow the temperature profile very well. It actually overheats the board quite a bit, doesn't cool it down nearly quickly enough, and the buttons are very, very bouncy with the default firmware. But at least after making some modifications to it before turning it on for the first time, no actual smoke was emitted when I turned it on, and it didn't stink up the house very much. Thanks for watching. Bye.